Who today has already had their coffee fix? <laughs> Who may have taken the time to consider where that coffee came from? The beans, were they blended? Did they journey from afar? I believe that coffee has the ability for us to understand, create, and build communities. Coffee is traced back to the 11th century when a herder by the name of Cowdy was entertained by his bouncing goats. Apparently they had nibbled on some cherries in the Ethiopian forests that just gave them stimulation and energy. His discovery was something that he was amazed by, so he shared this with some monks in the area that then brewed it into a coffee beverage that allowed them to stay up throughout the night to enjoy their long evening prayers. <laughs> like many of us, no doubt. <laughs> so coffee epidemic became instant. It traveled the globe instantaneously once people realized not just the flavors and the taste of these new founded berries, but also the effects it had on people to stimulate to energize, to even create. And so my husband and I were after these very same attributes <laughs> after 10 years of servicing our South Auckland community through Affirming Works, we decided to do something entrepreneurial and innovative. Ali Bate Mafaleo, my husband, having been a baker for 20 years, said, well, look, I can bake and he makes a great host in the kitchen. And I said, maybe we could dress the front of our offices up as a community cafe. So that's exactly what we did. We disguised our Affirming Works organization and we called it Community Cafe and we opened the doors to the public. The reason we did this was because after 10 years of servicing Pacific children and youth, we had realized that we had separated them from what was most important, and that was their nurturing community that they would flourish in. So we wanted the interface, the engagement, and the stimulus to occur again. And so with our flagship mentoring program, Dupuanga, we began inviting all our students back. And by the ninth year, we had already mentored 9,000 young people. And so we invited them and their friends and we created events to make um, the place an exciting place to be in. Not only did the coffee taste good, but it created a sense of ambience, stimulus, and engagement needed to allow the diverse communities within South Auckland to feel at ease in relating to one another. Community Cafe was not just a place for food and drink, it was a place where people could come and enjoy hot desking with free Wi-Fi. They could talk to their neighboring coffee drinker. They could be entertained by the open mic night on a Wednesday, enjoy a large island buffet on a Friday, and even have opportunities for free training and education. It was definitely a place of cross-fertilization, of ideas, of creativity, and of course, innovation. All we did was provide a shared space, a space that my husband baked in, and a space that our, our organization was able to serve that extra mile. We were raised in homes where our first language was often alo mai iputi, go and make that visitor a cup of tea. And that was the reminder of what it meant when our community walked into the cafe. Every youth worker, every manager, every staff member had to know how to host that stranger, ask them what their interests might be, not just in their meal or drink, but maybe in their life, and give them the opportunity to share in a conversation. So where people saw diversity and challenge, we saw difference and gave room to a life of innovation. The Community Cafe sought to create a new renaissance in South Auckland. It takes me back to the similar coffee houses of the 15th century. 
It is, we are in, it is in this century where patrons drink coffee and engage in conversation, but they also listen to music, watch performers, play chess, and listen to um, the most current news. There was equality in the room, there was the democratization of culture and ideas and thoughts. Community houses became an important center for the exchange of information and it became named the School of the Wise. My Affirming Works team daily sit in the School of the Wise and are taught by anyone that walks through that door as customers. They meet with local business owners, they meet with homelessness, they meet with parents, community workers, young people, sports people of all different cultures, and they are encouraged but what they have to add to not just our community, but to the lives around them. Another um, known era in England for the coffee houses was called the Penny Universities, where people would come to these coffee houses and with a penny, not just have a cup of coffee, but be, be stimulated by the con conversations beside them. My husband and I were also stimulated. <laughs> by these conversations. So much so that we decided that let's be a little bit more intentional about the community cafe. So we started to look into Pacific Island products. We understood that South Auckland was the largest Pacific city in the world, and we wanted to showcase that in a way that we could encourage and inspire our Pacific diaspora and those that lived with us. So we looked into where we could obtain good coffee. And we found that although there is something called the bean bout or the coffee bout, there was no um, presence of any, any coffee being in the Pacific region. But on one of our famous family trips to Tonga, we inquired about if coffee was growing in the homeland and we found that it was that in the 1970s, it was once a government cooperative that then became privatized. And during that particular weekend was actually for sale. <laughs> My husband and I were fortunate enough to put in a very small bid. We flew back Monday morning to find on Monday afternoon that we were the new owners of the Tongan coffee business. <laughs> we returned with our children a week later thinking we'd be there for maybe two, three weeks to just get people in jobs and get it going. We stayed three years. We restored 14 cooperative farms, each with five to 8,000 trees per farm. And we also built a factory that manufactures and produces the coffee today. We continue having relationships with the different villages that pick the coffee throughout Dongadapu, and we import um, we produce around up to eight to 10 ton a year, and we are the, in the priority coffee sellers in, in Tonga in the sense that we prioritize import substitution, and then we blend the coffee with other Pacific coffee brands to export it to our big markets in New Zealand. And we do this all through the one program, the flagship program that at the time stretched us after 10 years of a service where we needed to find extra income, we named the coffee after that same program. So that program meaning dupuanga, dupu to grow, to spring up, and anga in character. So dupuanga is about growing from your roots, roots, but also meaning cultural identity. The most exciting thing about producing coffee in Tonga and using it in our community cafe is that now we've found ways to connect our communities together. Those that are here living in South Auckland amongst the Pacific diaspora are able to have a little taste of something from their homeland and reminisce about their childhood. And we experience this on a daily basis when we are educated by the wise that walk into our cafe. So I encourage you to drop into the Mangere Art Centre and have a cup of Tupuanga coffee, knowing that it's all going back into our South Auckland children and youth. Thank you.